Welcome back to Rebel Fem Podcast. Yelp reviews. Love them, hate them. Sometimes they're great and sometimes they just make no fucking sense. <laughs> That's <laughs> all. And we're going to be talking about them because we've had lots of changes in the salon um, in the last several months at this point. Yeah. And because of these changes, <laughs> um, we've had lots of different reviews. Good, bad. So we're going to be breaking them down. The good, bad, the ugly, the all of the, the ish. All right. So we're going to actually we're recording this for YouTube as well. So if you want to watch this podcast, just a little friendly reminder, you can subscribe to our Rebel Femme podcast channel. Actually, it's not even podcast. It's like everything Rebel Femme. So there's hair tutorials and our podcast and kind of everything we do here at Rebel Femme. But just if you're listening to this, just know you can watch our beautiful faces on YouTube as well. <laughs> Mm, yes. So, <laughs> you're just super excited because we have uh, the little GoPros like all up in our faces. Too. Literally. <laughs> so we got multiple cameras going on. So you can see all my chins. <laughs> hey, if you can, I, I'm fine with all the mustache hair I got. I'm, I'm cool with it. So, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and dive right into uh, these Yelp reviews because um, I kind of just want to. I just want to put it out there because there's, you know, Yelp reviews. They're great. I read them all the time, especially when I'm looking for food or yeah. skincare stuff. They're helpful. Su super helpful. Right. But the problem with reviews is it's always one sided. Yes. You never get to see or hear the full story. Exactly. So I think that's kind of why we wanted to break these down, because while reviews especially the bad ones we have lots of great reviews by the way thank you for everybody who's left us positive and uh what do i want to say supportive Const supportive or even constructive reviews yeah. i love the constructive reviews as well like what can we do better we always want to do better um but just like we said in the intro here sometimes they just make no freaking sense so we're gonna go into some of the negative ones and just kind of break them down give you our side of the story and i think it's important too because i i think sometimes some of our clients even read and they're like hey, did you see this yelp review and we're like yeah so then they want to know they want to know the cheese they do so that's what we're gonna we're gonna expose it out here in the open so let's just drive right in what's the first one you dara <laughs> It's actually our second review on our page on Yelp. Um, See, I can't tell like what's first or whatever, because it's always different for me, depending if I'm looking from the business side. Oh, or, really? Yeah. So, yeah, they're kind of like all over the place, even like when you look at them on Yelp. OK, but this is definitely yeah, it's definitely the second one. It was posted a month ago and it is a one star I don't even I can't even I, I don't I, know what the buttons yeah, are me it's neither. too far too far and it's, it's a it's a little bright I can't see that it's cool um <laughs> would you like me to read the entire thing yes let's just read it oh, let's go for it all right let's go I was recommended to the salon I reached out to Lisa via email and requested I fill out a questionnaire I was happy to fill out as it made me feel at ease having them fully aware with less of a chance of miscommunication. I provided in detail condition of my hair, damaged, inspo pictures, current products used, personality, life, etc. Unfortunately, her price point was a bit higher than I anticipated. She was understanding and recommended me to one of her junior hairstylists within my budget. I reached out to Rebel Femme Salon to make my appointment with the junior stylist. I was assured all stylists had proper training, expressing in detail about my concerns and fears and why I opted to allow my hair to regain strength and give a break for many months. I felt comfortable being told Lisa supervised all junior stylists. I was extremely excited to have my hair done finally. I was clear and asked to get a hairstylist that was comfortable with working with my situation of having compromised hair in the crown area curly frizzy hair i wanted to maintain my blonde the stylists were trained and lisa master stylist would be overseeing my appointment was was with jackie once i sat in her chair i thought she read questionnaire i filled out i thought notes were inputted in their computer system of the day of my phone call as well. I repeatedly explained my situation. I asked Jackie directly if she felt comfortable doing my hair, having a regrowth damaged with blonde, frizzy, and so forth. I was told yes. I was waiting for this day. Jackie recommended I get some, 
get highlights, toner, haircut to start getting rid of the damaged ends. She also recommended K-18 spray for an additional $50. I agreed. While getting my hair done, not once did Lisa come to see her work. Once she finished taking out the foils, my hair looked really orangey as if a low developer or so was used. I had so many bands on my hair. I didn't want to freak out as she still needed to add a toner to correct. While waiting, I saw myself in the mirror. It looked darker. She turned what I had prior blonde to a horrible dark grayish greenish color. I was in complete shock. I asked her to show me a swatch book. She again mixed a different toner, holding back my tears. She was getting frustrated with me as she also had clients waiting for her. A coworker helped her with her client while she was trying to help me. She then started blow blow dry my hair with Dyson flyaway attachment on my hair being curly frizzy. Her blow drying technique a joke. A end result as if I slept with wet hair and woke up the next morning with dry, frizzy, puffy hair. I was ready to run out the door. I paid her along with a tip, looking ashamed of my ending result. Once in my car, I cried my eyes out. I looked better with my regrowth. Luckily, I thought I had completely lost my money and hair. I received a call from the salon. Yadira was very sweet and asked how I was. I explained my situation. She herself and the owner knew something was wrong. I was asked to come back. Thinking I would finally get it fully fixed, I met with Lisa. I apologized for the miscommunication. Or, sorry, I met with Lisa, apologized for the miscommunication, and told me Jackie was now sitting next to her for further training. I was happy for Jackie as it would help her in her career. My hair was stripped to get nasty toner. Toner. Oh, the sentence is a little weird. Yeah, it gets kind of tough to read at the end. (laughs) I don't know what she's trying to say. Added a few highlights around the focal or trim. She decided not to fix other highlights, shade banding or full head highlights. She would later fix it once she felt my hair was strong enough. I agreed as I was reminded me to be patient as she would fix someone else's mistake. She gifted me Kenra shampoo conditioner, two small sized k18 samples a week or two passed i got in touch with the salon i explained to them that my hair color drastically changed to a coppery color appointment was made lisa added a toner it appeared to be better in may lisa did a full weave on my hair leaving my hair with some bands left from jackie though hair color has improved it is not close to what i had originally bottom portion didn't blend in as i was told lisa was kind enough to fit me in her busy schedule I came in at 8 a.m. Friday and left at 3. I didn't think it would take or didn't think I would take that long. This is a long review. (laughs) I was charged and it's it's getting all over the place at this point. I was charged again for the second time once by Jackie and half price of what Lisa charged. I paid her, though, as I thought it was originally supposed to be done correctly. The first time I was desperate to feel and look prettier. I was upset to be in the salon for such a long time. I couldn't afford the multiple trips and being charged. My hair was not corrected as to what we had agreed initially. I wish they would have called to follow up on why I decided not to go back this last visit. I'm pretty sure it was easier to let me the problem quote unquote go away overall i am not happy it took me this long to express my experience as i was debating to post however i decided to move forward for those that are in a similar situation in my opinion i would have done everything possible to completely fix 100 percent. and this was posted january yeah and of this year um, oh no february first off this client it's been like a year since we, I think we've seen this person or maybe a little less than that, but it's definitely been months, like a really long time. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, the last part, you know, of like she wish we would have called her. There's no way for, I mean, we have, we have so many clients that we see every single week. Exactly. Um, we're not mind readers, right? I feel like that initial phone call was made because we were present. We saw the look on her face. Yeah. Beyond that, if we're not there, if we don't see you come back, if you fall off our books, like you said, we're not mind readers. I think, too, like, let's go ahead and break this down from the very beginning. So this client, uh, first off, um, filled out a questionnaire that was not part of our salon at all. So that's that was kind of like mistake number one. Um, So they filled out this questionnaire. Again, I had no 
knowledge or information that any of that had happened until I read that Yelp review, to be quite honest. Number two, the client did have really comp- overly compromised hair. And shouldn't overly have been Overly compromised hair. Um, you know, she probably could have had some highlights. Um, and I think where the miscommunication came in is when, you know, what was promised to her by the stylist at the time was that she was going to be, I guess, shadowed or overseen of this process. And I, I do want to clarify, too, that that this appointment, because of this appointment, we're super knowledgeable uh, on it because we saw that the client was not. I actually was the one that saw that she just mm-hmm. was not happy. But because of this client, um, there's a reason why <laughs> the stylist actually no longer works at our salon. And uh, it was just kind of like a huge learning moment for this stylist that she did need to get retraining and it just was really frustrating because um, of course we never, you know, we never want to have anybody upset about their hair service, but I feel like we did go above and beyond by calling her immediately, Mm -hmm. getting her back in, trying to rectify the situation. And like she mentioned in the Yelp review, we did the service for free as much as we could, because again, her hair was in such a compromised position already when she came in so it wasn't like we could just go in with this fresh canvas and and fix any mistakes because she already had like a huge regrowth and band as it was before she came in with broken hair we were kind of like in a really sticky situation and i was really well well aware of this uh when she came back because oh yeah you had called her Mm -hmm. and we got the full story you know i i think i don't know i have a lot to say about it um (laughs) but the the fact is that there's only so much we can do for compromised hair. And I feel like we saw her a few times with a complimentary service gifted her product to also rectify it. And this was over the course of a couple months that I think that we did what we could with the canvas that we had even before she got it quote unquote messed up. Yeah. And you know, we can't sit there and pick up every single tiny bit of hair. So I feel, uh, you know, we're, we're us as a salon in the wrong. Um, Yeah. I don't think that she should have taken, I I think the stylist that she was put with was not the correct stylist, was not the best stylist for her. She did have really dark, dark hair and wanted to be really blonde. (laughs) And I, I feel like it was just kind of like the stylist, I think, you know, and that's some of the stuff that is kind of out of our control a lot of the times as a salon owner or as a manager. We don't know a lot of these things that happen because we do see a lot of clients all the time. We should have been in that loop. And I think that's the part that we just weren't. Yeah. Well, after the fact. Exactly. <laughs> Which I think is, is half of these, actually. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that, like I said, we took a lot of responsibility for this for lack of a better word, like this fuck up. Um, But we also did everything we could within our power and our knowledge to rectify the situation. Again, with the canvas that we had, we couldn't go in and, and completely give her the look that she wanted. And like she said in the very beginning, she really didn't have the budget to for what she really wanted. Yeah. And in the end, we ended up spending a lot of dollars and labor hours to fix of fix what it. we could. Mm-hmm. So this was like a complete loss for us as a business. And then also she ended up just not being happy with her hair. So um, at the end of the day, we are all human. We do make mistakes, but I feel like we did what we could to own up to that mistake. And I I don't blame her. I don't blame her for not coming back. Um <laughs> Mm-mm. You know, uh, it, it was just I think all of it just stemmed from the very, very beginning of just the communication, the communication, which was completely nothing that you dare and I were involved in at the ver- at the beginning. So um, I don't know what else to say other than, um, you know, I'm sorry that you experienced that. That's not what we want to live up to. Um, but I do feel like we, we did everything we could. Yeah. Like I said, we had a a loss of hundreds of dollars at this point of trying to, to rectify everything to get your hair back to where it needed to be. Exactly. Or where you wanted it to be with the canvas you had. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to really like break it down unless you saw what we were dealing with. (laughs) Anyways, that was like, I, I think, like I said, that was kind of like the, the beginning phase of, a huge retraining process, you know, for our team, our staff. And that was like probably the biggest fuck up that we've had this year 
but that like we tried to like i said we try to fix it yeah okay <laughs> moving on all right so next one on the list fake review you want to talk about the fake one? Oh, which one are we which one are we wait. or do you want to talk about the troll one let's talk about the troll one that one was just annoying what was the reason all right <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about the troll so we get lots of troll reviews I, i'll just put it out that way we get lots of troll reviews and part of that is um a portion of that is because i do have a large following and do you know who she is <laughs> i had to i'm sorry <laughs> I, I have a large following on all social platforms um and occasionally i will get a troll from something that made a post i made them yeah i triggered them it's usually about like a, uh, how much an appointment costs with to, to get your hair done with me um and so occasionally i will get some person that lives in the middle of somewhere and leave a review for my salon which at the end of the day doesn't necessarily like affect me personally it but it affects the team that works next year yes, guys so um and it sucks because some of these mess or these reviews will come through and they never even visited our salon they've never had a service like they just try to make it look like they've had our service and we do everything we can to get the feedback from our clients so if there is something that we need to fix or if there's something we can do better we try to take care of it you know immediately and we have a lot of systems in place to kind of help mitigate a lot of these things so with that said um you know that's one aspect to the troll <laughs> review so now this is going to pan over to another type of troll we got <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about that particular troll and how she or they wrote in their review the Google one that oh, yeah. you um you specifically told them that they had too much lip fuller. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, oh, that's a stretch. <laughs> yeah, I uh, there's a, a Google review. You can go you can go look at it, just type in Rebel Femme. It's funny. And this person <laughs> again, if you actually you can like the thing with Google is like you can see their if you tap on their name, you can see like kind of where they mostly make reviews. This person's literally, I think like in Ohio or Iowa or something like far. It's like not even in California. And then I, you can also see the other reviews they've left. And it's funny because they're similar, right? They left a review for another salon and that salon also claims that they've never been to their salon either. So this person just literally leaves troll comments and reviews and sometimes google google has like removed some stuff because they know that it's not accurate or it's fake but sometimes they don't so i wonder if they dated a hairstylist and now they have like this big old vendetta against a bunch of know. hairstylists but, but yeah if you read the review they literally claimed <laughs> that i i told them that they had too much lip filler <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> fucking crazy <laughs> can you imagine me i'm doing someone's hair and i'm like oh you look so beautiful but you have way too much lip filler i think it says duck lips duck lips <laughs> what the fuck like i would never ever if you've ever had Damn your hair done Rella. with me you know that i'm super respectful I have great customer service why oh, you gotta be so cold <laughs> <laughs> i would never ever <laughs> anyways oh that's funny all right so back to the, the different type of troll reading all of this one too yeah let's just read it because okay. the truth is we've had a lot of shit happened in the last few months and this is a residual of that fair warning it's not that i can't read it's just that the way that these are written <laughs> that it is very hard to read <sighs> just just putting that out there so updating all on my not so great i updated about rebel fem 19 days ago if you will see i had posted dot dot what the f did I do I know do I know this review? <laughs> I don't know. But it continues. Strange how Morella never placed a reply to oh. my comments at all about how they made me feel in their podcast. T H E R E not T H E I R. Okay, wait, hold on one second. <laughs> so this Oh yeah, this one's about our podcast. Yeah, so we had a podcast up, or actually it is still up. Yes, it is um where we were talking about hair trends now i want to preface by saying <laughs> that i am over 40 years old okay Damn, i know it's hard to believe girl clap i don't know i don't know is that it <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> i am over 40 years old so when this person initially left a review 
about our podcast, she said that she was offended that I was saying that 40 year old women like would be sad or upset about these trends, which I'm still back myself on that. So I just kind of took it as a compliment that this this bitch, <laughs> I don't even care. <laughs> she thinks that I was younger than 40. So thank you for the compliment. I, I fucking love it. But um <laughs> Truth be told, okay, the, the, the podcast was there was nothing offensive in it at, at all. Like no. at all. I think she didn't listen to it and she didn't watch it all the way. And I just kindly reminded her of that. And this person went on all of our social channels on everything and even Yelp to leave reviews, more reviews, more negative reviews. And it was just kind of like getting out of hand at this point. So I did respond to her. I don't remember what I said, but um, I did screenshot this bad boy and I, I did send it. What you said. it was funny. And I sent it to Yadira. So this is why we still have it. But this lady went and erased <laughs> all of her stuff after she realized that she, in fact, she did not actually watch the whole video. <laughs> That's all. All right. So going back into it. Quote, unquote, those who are over 50 then said over 40 should not watch and would be depressed. Yeah. Unquote. By their podcast, Hair Trends Summer 2022. That's not exactly what I said, but. (laughs) Never did she even reach out nor comment. Maybe if I was misunderstanding the context of what they were saying, so I wouldn't feel offended and not wanted at their salon because I'm 59. Dot dot, but no comment nor reply back from her, the owner. Although, oh, but but I did. I responded to her. <laughs> Although she was quick to happily comment six months ago when I posted my great experience. Oh wait, hold on. This person also, this person has multiple cha- multiple uh, accounts accounts. So <laughs> you know you gotta put the good ones and then the bad ones but the rebel femme yelp is about our salon not the podcast but let's keep going (laughs) i guess i wasn't an important client to her salon after coming in weekly for the past six months but really i said in my updated 19 days ago re their constant use of the f word in the salon except never had my stylist use those unprofessional words (laughs) all throughout the salon and podcast And they even asked me to type in suggestions at my last appointment. And I mentioned the podcast in my suggestions and its content re over 40 years old and how it made me feel. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Just pause right there. (laughs) So this lady did leave us some feedback on our feedback form for the salon claiming that she did not like our use of the word fuck on our podcast. But I'm sorry, this is a podcast. If you don't like it and you don't like us using the word fuck, then don't listen to it. It's this is our podcast. Fucking easy. Literally. <laughs> Do we talk like this with our clients? No. We when we're out on the floor, sometimes we're ourselves. Yeah. But we're not like, hey, fuck you and fuck you and <laughs> fuck that person. And we're we don't talk like that. Like no. we just don't. But well, we are adults and we talk like adults. And this environment that we have here at the salon is to make you feel like you're at your girlfriend's house. So if our client wants to speak freely and tell us a story of how they want to tell us, I'm not going to be like, oh, you know, there's no cursing in here. <laughs> Got to censor that. Yeah. And the fact that she says that her stylist that she goes to and lady, I'm not going to say <laughs> your name, but if you are watching this or listening, I just want to let you know that your stylist, before you even came here, let us know that you're fucking batshit crazy. <laughs> so you might want to rethink how professional your stylist is because the stylist no longer works here. <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> the end, period. <laughs> yeah. There's only one more sentence on okay, that review. <laughs> this one like triggers me because it's like, she's psycho. Left 10, me- 10 reviews for what? Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, but this is not the type of business ethics that I've ever known in our community. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get when you work in South OC. That's all I get. Or, yeah, South OC. Yeah, you're in South OC. <laughs> I was like, wait, <laughs> where am I? <laughs> all I can say is that I am very happy that you and your stylist no longer come here because that was a little out of control and just uncalled for because that wasn't just the only review she left it was several 
everywhere. Um, and like I mentioned, she, after finally responding to her professionally, she did erase all of the ugly ones. Yes. So anyway, like I said, if you're listening, you know what I said. <laughs> said what i said okay what's the next one <laughs> um there's also another one but i don't know if we want to talk about this one i don't know if you want to talk about this one either is that a wait is that the fake review or the troll review no or the one that we just did that was the troll review that we just did okay the fake review is on the goggle we can read it if you want let's read the the fake review let me pull this one up this <laughs> one's funny i just love the mention of the duck lips oh okay i thought that's i, I thought we already talked about that one before did we I don't remember. I don't know. Anyways, just know that, like I said, we've had lots of changes going on. If you want to look at our reviews, you're more than welcome to. If you want the full story, come have a chat with us. We'll let you know. <laughs> Marilla might say that you have too much time. <laughs> filler. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I would never. I know you wouldn't. I would never. <laughs> if anything, I'm a very honest person. All right. Should I read it? Or sure. did you already read this one? I think we read it on another podcast episode. I think we but, did. but you can read it again. Let's let's have another laugh. I heard about the salon through my coworker. The service was fine and I was happy with my hair until shortly after all of my hair began to break off after hundreds of dollars spent on this service. All gone to waste right down the drain. I went to another salon and the stylist said she will have to cut off a few inches and she was going to have or going to save what she could. In the end she had to cut off five inches of hair. I'm infuriated. When I called and asked for a refund, she refused and began to call me cheap after I complained and had the other salon fix her mess. Then she even went on to say I look like a duck because I have lip filler. Insert sad face. Awful lady. Do not go to her. <laughs> Is this Margaret Popova? It sure is. Yeah. So this is the I. I think she's like like click on her name. It'll tell you where she's left reviews. Oh, I already did. Yeah. Is she like lives in Iowa or something? Yeah, Iowa. And she left another review for another salon. I don't know if you want to read that one. Oh. And it's a one star also. And she kind of says something similar. And it's crazy. And you can see the response from the salon. This this I don't I don't even know who this person is. This is, came from this came from a TikTok. I, I'm 100% positive because I had a TikTok that um, I was doing a cost breakdown and it's for some reason, every time I do these cost breakdowns, it triggers people. And uh, yeah, they all came and flooded in with fake reviews. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. At the end of the day, I think I think what was happening to you, like on my viral video, like people were arguing on it and then someone said something about lip filler and I like, honestly, I don't even, you can see like, sometimes I respond to these and sometimes I don't, but somebody said something about duck lip. I just remember seeing like duck lips or something about lip filler. And it was this specific person. She went on to say that she was a lawyer, an attorney, and that she doesn't even make that much and like all this and that. And I'm like, I was just, I remember reading it. Why is that your problem? Yeah. But I just remember reading it and I'm like, if you're such a successful attorney or doctor or whatever she said she was why in the fuck are you on tiktok arguing with the hairdresser about what they charge yeah i just don't i don't even i don't even have any words so yeah uh she did have a review for a different salon but the text is gone oh it is yeah it's just the one star now but, interesting but i do remember like it was almost like verbatim the same thing yeah and then the salon responded to it to that text yeah and they said we're sorry we are not even in our system you must be from the internet kind of thing like same kind of situation so it was just like out of control like how this person just would be on social media all day long and leave bad reviews yeah like how do you have this much time on your hands no clue <laughs> i just i just don't know <laughs> um but you know do you have any more no i think that's it that's it <laughs> thanks fucking bejesus here <laughs> Those are the worst of the worst. Here, here's the thing I want to, to to wrap all of this up. I I like reviews, good or bad. I But if you're going to leave a bad review, let's be constructive, right? Say what your experience was. I feel like for the most part, like if I've had a bad experience somewhere, I know we all have bad days. We're all human, right? It could be at a restaurant. It could be like, for example, you dare recommended this place for me to go eat. And I had like a terrible experience at it. <laughs> So it's just, it is what it is, right? But I didn't rush to Yelp to go leave a terrible review because it could have been an off day, yeah. right? Um, it could, And the thing is like, I'm able to communicate to management if it's that terrible, like, hey, like this is what's wrong or this is 
whatever, can we fix this? And if I feel like the business does, you know, has a good customer service then, and they do what they can within their means to make the situation right, then I'm like, cool, I'm not going to go and leave a bad review, right? Yeah. Unless they're like super terrible and they are like, no, F you, like you suck, you know, then yeah. I'd be like, okay, it's war now. <laughs> <laughs> Not how you are, <laughs> but but the, the the bottom line is, I feel like number one, we are not perfect. Our salon is one hundred percent not perfect. We do we have really talented staff here, and they do an amazing job. But everybody has off days, and I think for the most part, when a client says, "Hey, you know, this isn't right," or "My highlights this," or "My color that." We do everything we can. We have a policy of seven days. You can let us know within seven days. Hey, I'm not happy. And we'll be happy to redo it for you. Completely complimentary for free because we want you to be happy with your hair. Mm -hmm. That's why we have that policy in place. Um, And we do everything we can customer service wise to make you happy. Um, And then just, you know, communicate, you know, just let us know and we'll try to make it right for you. That's all we ever ask. Just communicate. Yeah. But if you don't communicate to us and you go to Yelp, we're not going to know until you leave the Yelp review. And then and we're going to be like, what? And then it's just too late at that point because we're like, okay, it's been seven days and you left us this nasty review. And now we don't, we can't fix it because it's been too long. Right. Exactly. We just don't know. So um, anyways, hopefully we don't get any more bad reviews, but if we do, we'll be, we'll be covering it on this podcast because <laughs> you know what? Like I said, we're not perfect. <laughs> Give us our, give, we'll give you our side of the story. Um, anything else? No, I think that's it. Cool. Got it all covered. Awesome. So with that note, thanks so much for listening to Rebel Femme Podcast. And before we go, show us some love by leaving us a review on your favorite streaming platform. <laughs> the irony. The irony. <laughs> See, we're on Apple uh, Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Uh, is it Google Play? Is that what it's called? Google? I think so. I don't even know. We're on Spotify. We're on everything. Everywhere. Now we're on YouTube as well. So you can't leave us a review on YouTube, but you sure can subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then just make sure to follow our Instagram page if you haven't already, at Rebel Femme, where we break down the episode throughout the week. And then finally, head to rebelfemme.com to book an appointment, listen to this podcast, or shop your favorite products. Yeah. And now we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. All right. Cheers. Bye.